joint. And I know you're probably in trouble here, so let me let you get yourself off the hook right now. Yes, Ahmad, I really appreciate the fact that I can uh, take this opportunity to wish my beautiful wife a happy Mother's Day along with my beautiful daughter-in-law and, believe it or not, my daughter. All right, now tell me about Now, Michael is one of these rare athletes that, as great as he is during the season, he really gets into another focus during the playoffs. Yeah, well, you know, Michael sort of bought this forward as he grew up, you know. He, he's one of those individuals that hates to lose. But police have refused any comment. Four people have been arrested for stripping and stealing the elder Jordan's car found last week in Fayetteville, North Carolina. None of those charged are said to be murder suspects. Jordan's body was found August 3rd. The Jordan family has released a statement saying they are shocked by the sudden loss. They're withholding further comment while the investigation is underway. Or in Lumberton, North Carolina, Mr. Jordan uh, had pulled off the side of the road uh, to obviously to rest for a while. Mr. Jordan uh, had pulled off the side of the road uh, to obviously to rest for a while and he was shot to death while in his car and was taken to the state of South Carolina and placed into the swamp where he was found. Police findings seem to confirm the idea that they had yesterday that this was merely a random act of violence and not a premeditated murder. Again, throughout the morning, we'll continue to bring you the latest information we have on the arrest of two suspects in the murder of James Jordan. Now, private funeral services will be held this afternoon in Wallace, North Carolina. James Jordan, the father of basketball superstar Michael Jordan, Larry Demery and Daniel Green also face charges of armed robbery and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Their next court appearance is set for September 3rd, given to his father. Police are still searching for the murder weapon. Well, I will not say that we have a confession. I don't use that word, but I will give you uh, that we do have statements from both defendants. What about the gun? Do you have a murder weapon? We do not have the gun in our possession at this time. We're still working on that to recover the gun. Two 18-year-olds accused of murdering the father of basketball star Michael Jordan appeared in court. Daniel Green, who had already spent time in jail for assault, and Larry Demery, who was under indictment for armed robbery, are good friends. They are both being held without bail. ABC's Jim Hickey is in North Carolina. Jordan family at all? As the two teenagers arrived for their appearance in Robinson County Court, North Carolina investigators said they had concrete evidence linking Daniel Green and Larry Demery to the murder of James Jordan. After questioning the suspects, deputies said they found a National Basketball Association all-star ring in a plastic bag, hidden in a rural part of the county. Michael Jordan apparently had given the ring to his father. These uh, two defendants did have, or was with uh, Mr. Jordan at one point in time, because that we do know where that ring come from. It did uh, belong or was in the possession of Mr. Jordan. According to authorities, Jordan was killed along this stretch of North Carolina Highway in the early morning hours of July 23rd. Driving to Charlotte, he apparently had pulled over to rest and was shot in his car. All right, y'all, what is going on? Hope y'all having a really good weekend. Hope y'all having a good day. By the time this video drops, I just wanted to come in right here just to let y'all know what is going on. Obviously, you already know we are here to cover Michael Jordan and the death of his dad and what we believe it to be as far as James Jordan when he was killed way back in 1993. All right. So um, I'm also going to tie something else to this video that is very, very interesting. Now, if you are on my first page, you remember I did this video on the first page where we covered Michael Jordan and what could have possibly been a ritual, um, a ritualistic death of his dad, James Jordan, right? So in this video, I have something new that I want to tie to this situation because it's something that I found in my research going back and preparing for this video. And I thought that the deaths were very, very similar. And um, this death happened to be four 
years after James um, Jordan was killed. Um, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to let the clip play when we get to that point of the video. But I thought it was really, really interesting. And it kind of adds more ammo to, you know, us and believing that James Jordan was sacrificed and he was not randomly killed as he so-called pulled over on the highway to rest, which is very suspicious and very odd because that's why I replayed that clip in the beginning where the guy um, where it looked like it was maybe a sheriff of that town where he was killed at or something. Right. And he said, James Jordan, he first off, he was telling the story as if he didn't want to tell it or he didn't really know what was going on or the truth of the real story because he kept stuttering. He was like, uh, uh, James, Mr. Jordan, uh, you know, you know, just people who don't really who not really telling the truth. They're not they're not just. They're not talking like how I'm talking, like I'm I'm just going, you know, like it's 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 flowing off because I'm telling the truth. I'm, I'm not making up my words when you got to make up stuff, you stutter. So he said James Jordan obviously pulled over to rest. Like he said, obviously, as if everyone thought that that was why he was pulling over. Or as if everyone already knew that, because the regular person's not going to assume, oh, he's pulling over and. You know, he's pulling over on the highway just to rest and sleep on just just a, not a rest stop, just a random place on the highway. And he said, obviously, as if everyone assumed that. But you see, that's a tactic to make this story sound truthful before you get a chance to think about something else, before you get a chance to question it. He's like he's saying, oh, yeah, he obviously pulled over to rest. He didn't pull over for any other reason. Or, you know, it couldn't have. You know, that where he pulled over probably didn't even happen that way. They don't want you to think any other way. So, you know, I just found that weird for him to speak that way without people actually assuming that. But anyways, y'all, I'm not going to talk too long right here because I do want to get right back to the clip that was planned. But I wanted to let y'all know what was going on in this video. So I'm going to come back after these next clips. So check this out. Police say the teenagers dumped his body in a South Carolina swamp about 60 miles away. Investigators say the two teenagers did not set out specifically to murder James Jordan, but that he just happened to be their victim when they went looking for someone to rob. The suspects apparently made several calls from the telephone in Jordan's luxury car. That's how detectives tracked them down. In court, Demery and Green said very little. But Demery, at one point, appeared to be weeping. This was merely a preliminary appearance. Their pleas of guilt or innocence will come later. Jim Hickey, ABC News, Lumberton, North Carolina. All right, y'all, I want y'all to understand something. You know, because the reason we play these news clips is obvious so you can kind of, you know, you can feel the texture of what is going on because it's being reported from the time that it happened. But it's also so you can catch, like, inconsistencies on how they explain the way things happen because they're giving it as if this is all happenstance like all of this just it just happened the the two the two young boys they they said that james jordan was not their intended target he just happened to be there when they were trying to rob someone then also james jordan just happened to stop in that particular area on the highway, he just happened to be tired to just take a break from driving. Remember, not at a rest stop. He just happened to pull over right there. They just happened to see him, James Jordan, out of anybody, out of the entire world, Michael Jordan's dad, the GOAT, Michael Jordan, just happens to be his dad. So you see what I'm trying to say? There's too many just happens here when we know nothing just happens y'all we just talked about this in the cat williams video we just talked about it we just talked about it we know that this is no none of that was coincidence it was all planned it was a it was a hit and it was planned it's simple none of that was happenstance it just didn't continuously happen then happen then happen and now james jordan is dead and that's Michael Jordan's dad. And yeah, it just happened. <laughs> That's almost the way they're giving it to you. So anyways, I just had to come in. I, I had to come in and say something about that part. 
we're going to get back to the video. Check this out. Rogers would not go into detail, but this is a complete switch from his stance on Tuesday when he told a Raleigh TV station that Green was the trigger man. The slaying perhaps occurred at the hands of third parties, not Mr. Demery, not Mr. Green. So are you saying that, that your, your client and Mr. Green may have stumbled across a corpse? There may very well be some evidence that that would be the case. Yes, ma'am. North Carolina authorities maintain there is no mistake and that, quote, we've got the right people. Tests on a 38 caliber gun believed to be the murder weapon could link the suspects to the killing. Results of the test are expected next week. Now, I found it interesting that both killers at the time were 18 years old. You know, um, we get a lot we get a lot from things that we've covered in the past that just deal with the number 18, because obviously the number 18 break down to three sixes. Three times six gives us 18. We we get that numerology with a lot of occult rituals and sacrifices, especially you know, when it comes to these murders by numbers. So we have to pay attention to that. And also we get a little bit of duality with both shooters being white and black. You know, um, I'm not sure if the other shooter, the lighter, the lighter guy at the time, I'm not sure if he was white or Hispanic, but it still gives us that duality of, you know, white and black. We have to pay attention to that. It's also the color coding, the color of the car that James Jordan was in represented sacrifice it was an all red lexus if i'm not mistaken that was a lexus so you know that gives us more to basically feed what we believe this to be you know i'm looking at it it's pretty obvious at this point um then it also if, if also jordan had 666 points scored in the playoffs the year before his dad died now, I'm not now. I don't think it's actually the year before it was the 92 to 93 playoff season. So usually the playoffs end around June. The finals are going into June. His dad died, I think, July 23rd, 1993. So that would have been about a month after the finals or so ended. And catch that 23. I'm going to have to fact check. I'm doing it off the top of my head. I'm going to put it in the video, rather it's true or not. I think it was July 23rd. That would give us another six. And Jordan had a total of 666 points in the playoffs that year. That gives us more to feed what we believe this to be. And I'm not making any of this stuff up. Then it also goes into what I wanted to tie into this video because it's almost an eerily similar death into how James Jordan was sacrificed. That takes us to Ennis Cosby. Now, a lot of y'all may have not have known, or unless you paid attention around this time, or unless you're older and you saw this on the news back in 97, Bill Cosby, only son, was murdered and took away from him in a very, very suspicious manner. And that's the death that I wanted to tie to this video because it's very, very similar in how they sacrificed him. He, guess what? He was also killed by 18-year-old shooter. And he was foreign. He might have been like Albanian or something like that. I can't really remember exactly, you know, um, where he was from. Um, but he was 18 years old at the time. So you have to catch that number 18 again. So that is going to be what this next clip is about. We're going to go into the death of Ennis Cosby, and we're going to just tie it all back together to James Jordan. No, they do not have any relation. I'm just doing this piece to the video because it gives us another example of how they like to sacrifice. And, you know, it just gives this video a little bit more juice because last time I didn't have this for the video I did on my first channel. So this is completely new material. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments, but check this out. Bill Cosby has finally spoken publicly about the greatest pain a parent can experience, the death of a child. In an interview with CBS News broadcast today, 
Crosby talked about the murder of his son, Ennis, who was gunned down on a Los Angeles freeway earlier this month. Crosby emotionally described the family's grief, their anger, and how they buried Ennis in an herb garden at the Crosby home in Massachusetts. We joined hands, and uh, we had on clothes like this. Uh, and it's cold, Massachusetts, and some snow is still there. I set the coffin down over the hole. And I said, um, I said, we now want to give praise to, praise to God for allowing us to, to know him. Not, not for giving him to us, but just letting us know him. that he was trying to buy NBC. Um, do you think that that had any um, precedence over or the reason why people, all these people came out, you know, saying that he did this to him because he was trying to make a power move in the black community or just in the community in general as well by buying NBC? He was trying to be a beacon and his son was murdered. Nobody ever mentions that. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever mentions his son was murdered in the richest community in the world. And it's Cosby, yeah, that's true. There hasn't been a murder there since. Wow. Nobody ever mentions his son was murdered in the richest community in the world. And it's Cosby, yeah, that's true. There hasn't been a murder there since. Wow. There's definitely that's why, you know, people have said, why are you riding so hard? Because it don't make sense. Hmm. None of this, this whole case don't make sense. Like, what? You said at night, in 1872, I did what? Yeah. <laughs> when black people couldn't even look at white women? <laughs> <laughs> this was, a, you were scared back then to say something? And then, and then now they found out that the testimony was all fucked up, and, and the girl Janice, uh, they had other other girls come in and, and testify who had nothing to do with it, and she's a drug addict. Mm. So it's all it's, it's it's something else going on, man. It's always something else going on. All right, y'all. So they started that interview off basically asking Faison Love. Did he believe in his Cosby death was a warning to Bill Cosby for trying to purchase NBC? You know, the media outlet, the news broadcast station, NBC. So Bill tried to purchase NBC starting back in 1993. His son died a few years later. It very well could have been a warning to Bill Cosby for trying to basically paint a better picture of black people in America because he was tired of how the media portrayed black people, which is why he also got into that little back and forth with D.L. Hughley when he called the radio station that D.L. Hughley was hosting. When he found out it was D.L. Hughley, he told him he didn't like his, his comedy style. He also told him that he used the word um, nigga, that he says nigga, so he don't like that, nor does he like his comedy style. D.L. Hughley's response was, you know, okay, but 
I don't have, you know, people basically accusing me of rape how you do, waking up drugged with their pants down. That was his exact response. Um, so, you know, um, that, that was that whole little back and forth that I'm sure a lot of people have seen before, especially when all the stuff came back around with, you know, everything that Bill Cosby was accused of. And most of all that stuff started once the rumors came back around of him trying to purchase NBC again. So it's very political at the end of the day with the entire Bill Cosby, you know, situation. But that was mostly the reason of him trying to buy NBC to basically get one of his sitcoms back and, you know, to have a better narrative on black people in America. Right. So Faison Love said his son was killed in the richest in the richest city in the world, basically the richest area in the world. He said there hasn't been a murder in that area since. Mind you, his son was killed in 1997. There hasn't been a murder in that area since, people. It's been over 20 years. Think about that. That's why he gave that face at the end. Ding, 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 ding. Is anything ringing off? Because a lot of people didn't even know about this murder. I started asking people that, you know, my friends and people around me, did they know anything about this? Most people didn't even know. Didn't even know that he, he actually died in 97. So, like I said... This doesn't have anything to do with the Jordan section of this video. This is just to show you guys another example of someone who's just as famous as Michael Jordan and someone who lost a loved one because of Hollywood and the way that, you know, the occult likes to sacrifice. And they will basically, you know, they will take out your loved ones if you're not in line with what they're trying to do. Or if you're just, you know, um, (laughs) If you're just basically not following the narrative that you first signed up to do. And, you know, as far as the whole Bill Cosby thing, rather you guys believe he's completely guilty or innocent, you know, um, it's, it's kind of just like how other things have happened in the past. Rather or not, he actually did those things. It's, it's one or two things. It's either he didn't do it at all and they're framing him or it's that he did do it and they just held it off until they needed it for ammo to blackmail him, basically. So it's only one of those two things is either he really did it or he didn't do it at all. And we know how the industry goes. He could have very well really did all of that he's accused for. And they just held it for ammo. They held it. And that's just how it goes. Same way with the NFL players. Antonio Brown, they did the same thing to him. As soon as he started calling all those owners crackers and all that shit. Now he had a um, case with a woman. Same thing with Deshaun Watson. He had all that stuff going on with Houston behind the scenes and all the shit with the owners. And next thing you know, he's raped or have shown himself to 20 plus women. And these are two, these are all black, these are all black people. When Ben Roethlisberger, he actually did, you know, um, I think it was assault to some woman here in Georgia or some kind of rape charge. I think it was twice. And he still went on to have a long career. And he's a white quarterback. So, you know, I'll let y'all decide on what you think is really the truth or not. Y'all let me know what's going on in the comments. As always, man, I really do appreciate y'all. It's Sunday. It's Sacrifice Sunday. And I'm Black Balloon. And I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.